The Supreme Court today sent the 11 convicts in the Bilkis Banner case back to jail. It has essentially quashed Gujarat government's decision to allow remission of life imprisonment of these 11 convicts. These convicts were released by the Gujarat government back in August 2022. But the Supreme Court has now fixed a two-week deadline for these convicts to surrender before the jail concerned. But what is this case about and why were these convicts released in the first place? I'm Apoorva Mandhani and I'm going to answer all of these questions for you in this video. Now here's what happened. Bano's case was perhaps one of the most brutal of the 2002 Gujarat riots cases. According to Bano, 14 members of her family were killed by a mob at Gujarat's Randikpur village in February 2002. As we know, thousands of Karsevaks traveled from Gujarat to Ayodhya to participate in the inauguration of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad's 100-day Purnahuti Mahayagna. This event was a part of the VHP's agenda to build a Ram temple on the disputed Babri Masjid site. On 27 February 2002, between 7.40 a.m. and 7.50 a.m., the train arrived at Gotra. As it was about to leave the station, someone pulled the emergency chain, bringing the train to a halt. A coach of the Sabarmati Express, Coach S6, was set ablaze and 59 passengers travelling in that coach were charred to death. The victims included 27 women and 10 children. Injuries were suffered by another 48 passengers in the train. The event triggered one of the worst communal riots witnessed in the country. The next day, Bilkis Bano's village, like I mentioned, Randikpur, saw incidents of arson and looting. Bano's family was on the run, going from village to village in search of safety. However, on 3rd March, they were attack attacked by several men who came in two white vehicles. They were carrying swords, lathis and sickles in their hands and as per Bano, they started shouting Musalmano ko maro or kill the Muslims when they saw the, her family. From the people who attacked them, Bano identified all the 12 accused. She also alleged that one of the accused, Shailesh Chimanlal Bhatt, pulled Bano's three-year-old daughter Saleha from her arms and smashed her on the ground. The men then went on to rape Bano and all the other women of her family. Bano was unconscious for several hours after the incident and found herself naked when she regained consciousness. She found a petticoat nearby, covered herself with it and crawled up her hilltop and hid there. The next day, she climbed down the hill from the other side, met a tribal woman who helped Bano with some clothes and later became a prosecution witness in the case. Bano drank some water at a nearby hand pump. She then saw a vehicle with two persons in uniform and requested them to take her someplace safe. All this has been narrated in the judgments passed by the courts in her case over the years and that's where I'm getting you these facts from. Bano finally filed an FR in the case and had a long legal battle ahead of her. In 2004, she also petitioned the Supreme Court to move the trial from Gujarat and so in August 2004, the case was shifted to Mumbai. This is a crucial detail which I will be referring to again. And it was after a long and arduous struggle that in 2008, the trial court finally convicted 13 people. 12 were convicted for gang rape, murder and rioting. And the 13th man was the police officer who recorded the FIR in her case incorrectly and was held guilty. You can see the names of the 12 convicts on your screens right now. They were all awarded life imprisonment. Now, why were they released? Now, life imprisonment actually means living in jail for life. But Section 432 of the Code of Criminal Procedure permits the appropriate government, which may be the union and the state governments, to reduce a person's sentence. And that's what remission essentially means. It means reducing the amount of sentence without changing its character. For example, two years rigorous imprisonment can be remitted to one year rigorous imprisonment. But this isn't a right. It's essentially a discretion that the government has, the appropriate government has. And Section 433A of the CRPC places a restriction on powers of remission. It says that where a person has been given a life sentence for a crime which has death penalty as one of the possible punishments, then such a person shall not be released from prison unless he has served at least 14 years in jail. Now, state governments usually set up a sentence review board to exercise the powers under Section 432 of the CRPC. And what are the grounds on which remission is granted? The Supreme Court has held that states cannot exercise the power of remission arbitrarily and must follow due process. Now, the policy on this varies from state to state, but broadly, the grounds for remission considered by the board are the same more or less. In fact, in the year 2000, the Supreme Court laid down 
around five grounds on which remission is usually considered. You can see these grounds on your screen right now. Now in Bano's case, one of the convicts, Radesham Bhagwan Das Shah or uh, Lala Vakil, he's also known as Lala Vakil, approached the Supreme Court in March 2022 seeking a direction to the Gujarat government to consider his application for premature release. He pointed out that as of April that year, the convicts had already spent 15 years and 4 months in jail. The Supreme Court passed an order in May 2022 on two points. First, it said that the Gujarat government should consider the remission and not the Maharashtra government. There was some confusion here because as I had mentioned, the conviction happened in Maharashtra, but the Supreme Court said that since the crime was committed in Gujarat, the Gujarat government should consider the applications. Second, the court said that their application would be considered under the state government's 1992 policy for state remission and premature release of prisoners. It said that this was because premature release needs to be considered on the basis of the policy prevalent on the date of the conviction. It then directed the Gujarat government to consider Shah's application for premature release within two months according to the applicable remission policy. In August 2022, they were then granted remission by, by the Gujarat government. Now, there was this another confusion apart from whether Gujarat government should consider it or Maharashtra government. There was this whole confusion on whether the 11 convicts were released under the right policy because the Gujarat government had a two-page circular in 1992 on remissions. This circular didn't really say much. It just pertained to early release of life convicts who had served out 14 years of jail time on and after 18 December 1978. It just laid down the procedure for remission but didn't mention any exceptions or factors that need to be considered when granting remission. This has over the years evolved through judicial policy and Supreme Court judgments but basically this was the policy which was used to release the convicts. But there's another policy. The latest policy in Gujarat was passed in January 2014 and it expressly bars the government from granting remission or premature release to prisoners convicted for a crime that was investigated by the Central Bureau of Investigation or CBI and prisoners convicted for murder with rape or gang rape. Therefore, if the applications of the convicts in the Bilkis Bano case were considered under the new policy, the 2014 policy, the state government would have been barred by its own policy from releasing them. Bano, of course, challenged their remission in the Supreme Court right away. The court heard the petitions for 11 days last year and had reserved its judgment on 12th October. The Supreme Court has now ruled on these petitions. It has ruled that the Gujarat government lacked jurisdiction to grant premature release to the convicts. According to the bench, the term appropriate government mentioned in section 432 of the CRPC would mean the state where the trial has taken place and not where the crime is committed. So essentially, the court noted that the trial was transferred from Gujarat to Maharashtra. Hence, the latter, the Maharashtra government, was the appropriate government to decide on the remission application of the convicts. The court also noted that the remission orders were non-speaking and suffered from non-application of mind. They were stereotyped and cyclostyled orders and amounted to abuse of discretion by the state government, which is the Gujarat government in this case. And the Supreme Court even pulled up one of the 11 convicts, Radhe Sham Bhagwandas, for suppressing facts and misleading the Supreme Court to give a direction in May 2022 to the Gujarat government to consider their remission applications under the 1992 policy, which of course allowed the state to grant early release to convicts in rape cases. The court said that the May 2022 order of the Supreme Court was hit by fraud and cannot be given effect to. Therefore, the bench in this case comprising Justices B.V. Nagaratna and Ojal Bhayan have held that the 11 convicts have to report back to the jail authorities within two weeks and continue to remain in jail. That's all I have for you for now. This is Apurva Mandhani for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.